All right, here we are on Evan's second tree. I'm gonna give him a little bit of help uh, prepping this. We're gonna show him that he can rig things over to the other spar. So the advantage is he'll get the, the feeling of rigging and he'll be tied in um, in a more comfortable way from, from up above and flip line. It'll be a perfect little environment of safety and instruction. I forgot to put my spurs on. <laughs> I overestimate myself. <laughs> I'm like, what the heck is wrong with these spurs? Oh, okay. Oh, that's going to work a lot better. <laughs> so much more traction. Okay, tie it in twice. Evan's watching, so I'm gonna use two hands. Chain break, in between cuts. <laughs> Evan said, I've seen your videos. <laughs> okay, never mind then. So I like to manipulate these pieces with one hand and cut with the other. I get a lot more control of where they go that way. But since I'm trying to model two-handedness right now, I'm going to do it differently. wanting to hang up on the other one so if I cut it off it could come free and then swing out and I don't really want that so I'm gonna make the other one go too Now they're falling right under the tree instead of out there somewhere. And I somehow did that with two hands. It can be done. I'm gonna actually do a video series on where we try to follow every rule. Just for uh, somebody if they wanted to know. Or some really green person like my daughter who's 11, you know. So when I cut them all the way through quick like that, it's because I want them to fall, yeah, without swinging under like this. And sometimes you can't do it right here. You have to do it out a bit, which means then you make another cut. And this little limb I could do right at the base. You don't cut every limb the same. Like that one, I hung it up and then cut it off. Hey, Evan. So one of the advantages of one-handing, if you ever were to do it, is like I could just reach out right now and cut that off. It's kind of underneath this one. It's kind of in the way. I wouldn't have to go through a bunch of effort to get all in some kind of ergonomic position for it. The thing about one-handing is they're afraid you'll get a kickback and cut yourself. But you're putting the tip way out away from you when you're like this. And as long as you don't cut with the tip, you're not going to get a kickback. 
Yeah. So, yeah, these, some of these rules are to protect new people, but they, they really should not be categorical rules for everyone. But I'm still gonna follow the rules right now. So in, instead of doing it that way, I'm just gonna use two hands and peel this under and, and then cut it off. See, I'm gonna peel it under. See, I missed, I missed the limb. Now I'm gonna reach down here, two hands. A lot of times it's just doing things differently. Somebody would argue that one way is safe and one way isn't. They want to ban certain techniques. And um, I disagree with that, except for at certain times in your life, you know, or your experience. Also, I think it's okay for um, a company to say, you can't do that here. You know what I mean? Because it's their company. And um, they want to play statistics, you know? There's going to be inherent dangers in everything, but people will try to tell you that, you know, they're always playing the odds. Well, this way has less accidents. Okay. Well, that's because the accidents that are happening are often by new people trying things out that they're not ready for. Okay, so this limb, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna fast cut it right off and then I'm gonna cut it again. Yeah. And then I top barred it. This one, um, I'll swing it under and stop it. And then I can cut it here and I know that the, that it's not gonna hit my flip line and bump me. If I cut it here, it'll be fine, but it might come down and snag on your rope and give you a yank. So sometimes you'll need to go like. Yeah, now I just got this little stick to deal with. Yeah, little things like that. I think I'll set my rigging in just a minute, a little higher. Now I'm starting to get pretty far away from the tree, right? I'm having to reach forward or I'm having to try to balance, which is silly. I shouldn't have to try to balance. I should just lean into my gear. So if I come forward a bit, tighten up the line. Now I'm in this cool ergonomic position. Yeah, and I have, I have one leg that's pretty much locked, which means I'm not having bent legs all, you know, fighting it with a bunch of muscles working. So this one, uh, again, I could, you could dissect things, you know, cut them into multiple pieces. I've had to do that for years with ground men on the ground that didn't know how to run a saw. You end up processing the tree from the tree. But sometimes it's just also convenient for controlling each piece. I was in, in that position, I top barred it just because it was uh, a more ergonomically appropriate for what my body was telling me I needed at that moment. And I don't, after a while, your body kind of does it and you're just there with it. Well, yeah, because I was on the left side and so I was trying to get out like this. But if I go like that, see how the angle of the bar changed? And so it wasn't, the angle of the bar wasn't cutting away from me. It was more perpendicular into the limb. So like this one, I wouldn't top bar this. That'd be hard from this spot, but it'd be right to cut it like this. Hinge it down. Now I don't want all this banging into my feet and stuff. So you can go flamingo and, and stand on one spur and then cut it here so that 
it doesn't crash into your flip line or your boot. There's a bind. Okay, now I just have this little piece to deal with. All these little tricks you'll find, like you'll see them and understand them when somebody explains it like I'm doing, but not really until you get there and you start saying, what, you know, you start just remembering things you've seen or heard. It's like that with the pilot, the guy that's teaching me how to fly. He talks to me a lot while I'm flying and I can't concentrate on a lot of it because I'm trying to fly and it's all new to me. And then later I watch the video of him talking to me or later I'm flying solo and I remember something that my subconscious picked up from him. So I'm going to set up the rigging and I'm going to set up a tie-in for you. Okay, YouTube. So I've, I've got Evan set up with a little pulley up here to rig from. It's not huge, but we're not doing huge stuff, right? So then I got myself set up a DRT so I can be right here with him. And I'm going to teach him how to rig some limbs off on the way up and then eventually he'll pop a top out off of my spar. So I set him up SRT right there. And so he'll stay tied in. So one thing you'll have to kind of be aware of is this time you'll be coming up and there'll be a rope in front of you the whole time that you have to be careful not to cut. You'll have your flip line around the tree the whole time too while you're cutting. Still, the line is going to be in your face more than it was before when you were flip lining and your, uh, your climb line was just choking the tree around near the flip line. You're doing good. Coming right up here like, like a brave young man. <laughs> or a brave human being. Don't want to leave anybody out. I hope this tree is yeah. strong enough for both of us. <laughs> You've already removed more weight than, than where True. I am. Oh, and you, you show common sense. Good, okay. <laughs> All right. That's going to be your first cut. And then I've set one up for you to, to rig out. I'm going I'm to hand you a saw. So I'm going to hook it on, maybe out a little bit, a foot or two. I'm going to show you a way to use the speed line kit that's not speed lining, but it's also, but it's very, all right, thanks. Pull up your kit. So now you'll, you would hook up this one. Right here. And, uh, yep. Good. And it's into the spine, see? Yep. Not on the gate side. And now I'll put a speed line sling on the other limb. This big guy right here. Yeah. Now just clip it to this line. And now cut you'll cut. you can you can go either way, but you'll cut the terminal first, which is the one that's stopped, you know. Right. And then I'll hold it up. And then you cut the other one, and when that one comes into it, I'll send it over. All right, we ready? Terminal first. Ooh, yeah, the big ones you gotta kind of notch a little first. So, oh, notch on the bottom. Or cut faster. Just cut faster.
Sometimes when I'm doing this alone, like that's a bit heavy for me, I'll take oh, okay. and I'll pinch the rope Friction. against the tree with my boot. Right. That's how I held it when you first cut it there. And that's why I always have a big groove in my boot right here on the bottom uh, of my... Yeah, march on up to the next one. We're gonna do a few like this. It's, we call it bundle and deliver. Bundle and deliver. Yeah, bundle and deliver. Okay, so on this one, is this just one? Oh, there's two right here. So this will be the terminal? Yep. You can rest into your gear. See how I am? Uh -huh. I am held up. And then when you're doing these moves, you won't feel like you're stuck in one spot. You'll have this whole pivot, look. I mean, you, it'll be a lot more convenient for hooking stuff up. So this right. one, if it went, it would be against the gate side. So we want it. I want it against the spine, like that. Oh, okay, good okay. So, well, the weight is gonna take it that way. Okay. And we want, when, it, when the weight gets on it, we want the spine of the carabiner against the rope. So then you'll take that, um, hook up the big one. And I'll, I'll give you a nice little camera view of your heroics right here. Same thing, terminal first? In this case, I'd say so. Yeah, it'll... Right. It'll probably keep the, the rope free of, of the saw, you know what I mean? Ready? I gotta get my little lowering device in. Okay. Now you, you, this looks floppy. You could tighten that up and lean into it a little and you'd be more comfortable. Like, like walk up a little bit. Walk up the tree. Now tighten it up. Now, well, now sit back. You feel that extra support? Yeah, a little bit. I think it might be sliding a little bit. If it's sliding, we need to fix it. Yeah, you got better support now. You don't have to like, and then you kind of use them both. Like I'm using, I'm back against the flip line and I'm down against the climb line. So I'm like totally supported, there not you know fighting anything. I let, I let out the flip line a little bit because I was almost too close maybe. Yeah, well that'll be up to you. Right, yeah, I'm almost, I think if I'm going up, I'm going Well, yeah, when you're cutting and and your uh, climb lines in, it might feel different. Okay, so I'm definitely going to want to use, not bury the bar too far. Yeah, don't cut the rigging. Ready? Yep. I'm a boot burner. <laughs> I'm a boot burner. Oh. Yeah, bundle and delivery. Got two more little twigs. One. One more. Hold on, let me get my 
and a lowering device in place. Okay, see there's my little lowering device, my little boot burner. Okay, go ahead. Okay. That saves me from burning my hands. It's a little bit unsanctioned. Right? Alright, we got Corey now. Alright, I'll climb up a little bit more. Unorthodox. Unallowed? I don't know what it is, but it's what I do sometimes. I don't think there's a rule against it. Unallowed? So when you wanna when you want your line out of the way, take your left elbow and hook it around the line. No, I'll hold it like this. That keeps your rope away from this little limb that you're about to cut. I'll take care of the limb. Okay. May not be the fastest climber here today. I may not be fast, but I do poor quality work. <laughs> <laughs> you see why I end up cutting close to my line now? Like I don't want to hit this one. I do. I do a lot of very controlled things. You can. You can control that. Be very gentle. And, yeah, you're in charge. You're tied in twice. Yep. You're the pilot in command. Pilot in command. Hey Damien, you want to rig his top? Yeah. Uh, lower it, cause uh, I got no lowering device up here. Yeah, you gonna do it right now? Yep. Are you ready? Yeah, like I said, face it out toward that. Um, when you when you do your back cut, you want to keep the saw moving through it. Okay. But if it slows down, like like if the top isn't moving. Don't keep cutting. Right. Uh, or if it starts to sit back, don't keep cutting because, you know, we might have to push on it or something. Right. But I, I'm here, so I'll be able to push if, if we have to. You'll be able to see what's, what's happening. Yeah. I just don't want you to um, cut too slow on your back because there's no reason to go real slow. We got Evan and he's going to rig his top off of my top out of a co-dominant uh, twin school marm tree. Damien's on the ground and he's going to um, he's going to run he's going to run the rope. Yeah, he's going to run it Woo! out there, I hope. We'll get rocked around a little bit, but it'll be okay. So if if his back cut causes the top uh, to sit or not tip, then I'll reach over there and I'll probably be able to do a little bit of shoving on it. But I think if if he just kind of feathers it, it'll probably tip on its own. Never know though, because the, the limbs are married up there. Ridiculous. <laughs> it's all for you, Tube. Thank you. Don't bump the Teletubby angler, fish, narwhal, unicorn hat. Oh, what's up? 
<laughs> adjust, adjust. All right. Am I ready to go? Okay, so remember, don't cut it off the stump. If it's not going, we'll do something else. If it's not going, we'll do something else. Yeah. It's, it's heading out over the shop. Over the, yeah. Yeah, it's out over the shop. So, I need to be pointing my bar almost at that other tree over there. Let's see what happens. Point. I got about an inch of hinge wood, right? Yeah, and you got a half inch on this side. Yeah. I don't have much left. Half an inch here. There it goes. There was a lot going on. <laughs> you did a good job of stopping. So that's what our main worry was, you know, don't cut the holding wood off. If it's right. not going, we'll do something else. We kind of thought it might happen. That's what happened. Right. Your hinge is perfect. perfect. Yes. I had a little more on that side than I did on this side. And that's what I was like. That's where you wanted it. It was what? perfect. Perfect. Yeah, when you said that there was less, less, not very much there, I'm like, man, I don't have a whole lot left oh. on this side. Yeah, you stopped right on the money. There you go. Woo -hoo -hoo! That was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but then, like, as the top was going off, I'm like, that thing's rigged, right? And it's like, and I'm like, what do I do with my hands? Like, do I? <laughs> So there was a, there was a moment of just like uh, what do I do, and then all of a sudden, as soon as it started to go, and you could see it caught the rope, and it was just like, whoa! <laughs> yeah. There's just, there's just so much going on at the same moment. Yeah. So, so you need to uh, go down about ten feet, but in order to do that, you're gonna have to take your SRT with you. I could set you up That's SRT right here if you want. Let's do that. Do you need this rig? You need this setup? I'll set you up here. I'll set you up here, and then that way you don't have to keep fiddling with your SRT uh, tie. Okay. I'm like looking, I'm looking right in front of me, and all of a sudden it's just. Whew. Yeah, it definitely takes a second to kind of get used to all this, all these dynamics, moving these ropes around, literally learning the ropes. I've used that term before, but I never had ropes to learn on. So that's new. I keep hitting my uh, my camera in front of me. But that's okay. Because we're gonna have great footage of all this when I'm done. When we're done. Everybody's had a first time climbing, but not everybody had five cameras on them. <laughs> yeah, with a hundred thousand people that are gonna watch. <laughs> Same thing, I'm gonna aim out that way. I'm gonna cut right through. Ready? Wow, things turned on. Alright, 
cutting another piece off. Okay, I'm just about through, Damien. Um, I'm really close. Yeah, it's thrusting in the bar right now. This is the face that you'll see when you call Monkey Beaver. I mean, there's other people that you'll hear too, but 90% of the time, it is this face. This terrified Canadian face. <laughs> no, it's, I'm not terrified. I am with good people right now. Can you believe I was all the way up there? <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm getting close, Damien. I mean, I could go a little bit more, maybe. I think I'm almost all the way through. Might just be not much but bark left. Oh yeah. Okay, I think you're good. You ready? All right. Oh, now it's leaning back. There it goes. Gonna bomb. Ready? I'm stuck in my. Oh, that. Yeah, there we go. Good <laughs> that was good. Thanks for having me. <laughs> this is amazing. Yeah, it, it takes some. Uh... Well, the uh, the fact that I had you guys with me made all of the difference. Where you're like, okay, I, I can trust, I can trust. Well, I could, I could trust it, and at this point, I'm just basically following instructions. Yeah, yeah, like, there was <laughs> there there was a time at the there was a time at the top there where. August was explaining something to me, but it wasn't quite landing. But yeah. I, uh, I repositioned and I figured it out. But well, YouTube, that was uh, that was great. I did two trees today. One with Damien right here. That's, that was the first that's one. That's me. And uh, one with August Haneke. He's still up there. We're gonna get him a new battery and get him going but what a wonderful experience what a great time I don't I don't see anybody Okay. Where she go? There's the camera. Oh, found it. <laughs> yeah, camera safe. It's time for Evan to fly solo. He's been with the CFI twice, once with Damien, once with me. And so now he's going up this tree. You can see it leans out over the house. 
so we thought it would be a perfect one for his first solo. Yeah, he's on his way. Everything he does is up to him. It's his, his world. <laughs> 